uh, well dear students myself sir shahad hussain let us uh, talk about the derivatives of the skin or the integument and today we shall pick up only one derivative that is gland so it is not only one gland there are so many glands which are produced by the which are derived from the skin so let us see one by one what are they uh, in total there are nine major types of the glands that are derived from the skin number one is the mucus gland number two poison gland three luminescent gland or photophores four femoral glands five uropegial glands six sweat glands or sudoriferous gland uh, seven sebaceous gland eight scent gland nine memory gland so uh, this is the mucus gland the first gland that we are going to discuss mucus gland secrete mucin and mucin is a slimy and sticky substance it is slimy that means tip, slippery sticky as well something gets sticked into it so called the mucus it is secreted to keep the skin moist and slippery and because of this it protects against harmful bacteria and fungi so bacteria and the fungi they may not get themselves attached and flourished on the skin because of the presence of the mucin present on the skin the mucus glands are very much abundant in amphibians and mucus gland may be unicellular and they may be multicellular the various mucus glands variously called in various groups like you can see the granular cells in the beaker cells of amphiopus cyclostomes and the fishes are basically the mucus gland having the function of the mucus gland then you are having the second gland the poison gland uh, poison glands are present in many fishes and many amphibians these are uh, modified multicellular cutaneous glands cutaneous you can understand because they are the glands of the skin <coughs> so they are multicellular also they are large but fewer than mucus gland this is the difference between them that they are basically the modified cutaneous mucus gland but they are large and few as compared to the mucus gland which are mucus gland are always small in size and many in numbers like you can see the parotid gland behind the head of the toe here i have shown over here this is the parotid gland it is basically aggregation of poison gland at this location which produces poison the secretion of poison gland may be bitter so in taste it is bitter it and if uh, some predator wants to take it once it comes in touch with the gland it causes irritation also and as a result sometimes it is so dangerous that the, if the predator will take it the the, parot, the the poison gland will destroy the predator itself so here they are functioning as a production that is why they are produced over the body of some animals then you are having the luminescent glands or the photophores so uh, luminous, luminescent glands are multicellular epidermal glands that means they are produced from the epidermis they serve the purpose of light emitting so they are light emitting organs they emit light like you can see this is a dark deep sea where you can see this fish producing the light so the organs which are producing the light they are the they are basically the luminescent gland they are also called the photophores they are present in the deep sea no once the light is flashed on and off then the 
it serves two purpose one once the light is on some prey are attracted towards the light then the light is off as a result prey will not uh, escape from the from the site it will not be able to detect the animal and the predator will take it on the other hand sometimes if the animal producing the light want to escape from the predator it will produce a flash of light the abrupt and the sudden flash of light you know will uh, lead to uh, blinking of the eyes of the predator as a result predator will close its eye as will not be able to adjust immediately with the bright light and the prey will get the time to escape from the uh, approach of the predator then there is a fourth type of gland called the femoral gland these glands are present on the male lizards uromastics on the ventral surface of each thigh you can see this is the posterior limb this is the thigh portion they are present on the ventral surface lower surface of the thigh in a single row you can see it is a single row of the gland uh, they may be 10 to 12 in numbers so basically these are the pores from with which these glands are secreting their secretion outside and this uh, these glands they starts from the cloacal aperture and ends up to the knee so from here to knee cloacal aperture to knee these glands are present <coughs> these femoral glands <coughs> produces the sticky secretion once the sticky secretion comes out get stuck to the skin comes in contact with the air it get hardens once it hardens it forms a spine like feature and once the spine like feature are formed these spines help the male to hold the female during copulation so they are avoiding the slippery uh, nature of the female then you might have seen the uropegial glands in the birds uh, it is found in the birds you can see here this is the arrow this is the location of the uropegial gland uh, it is found in the bird it is a basically a prominent swelling just above the tail called the uropegian you can see over here also this is the swelling above the tail called the uropegium this gland is branched now let us see and alveolar basically whenever you look at the glands glands may be having the two types either may be tube like like this or they may be alveolar Alve this shape is alveolar looking like the alveoli of the lungs so if they are it, it is a, it is a tube having no branch it is a simple type alveoli alveolar without branch it is the simple type and if the tubular is having the branch then it is called branched tubular and if it is having the branch it will be called branched alveolar and sometime the branches may in turn gives out some other branches also so then the structure is called compound structure so it is the it is the compound tubular gland and it is the compound alveolar gland so these are the various shapes of the gland uh, look at the uropegial gland it is branched alveolar so this type of shape is it is having okay uh, it exudes an oily secretion used for lubricating beak you might have seen the birds they put their beak back over here take the oil then preen the feathers so this is what is called the preening of the feather uh, in addition to it this gland also attacks the opposite sex during breeding season uh, due to its smell that is odoriferous nature that it can produce a smell which attract the opposite sex look at the preening uh, phenomenon of the birds no it has taken the oil from the uropegial gland no it is rubbing the beak on the uh, on the feathers so as to make the the feathers waterproof so that the water may not get entrapped and enter into the uh, feathers and the bird may not feel uh, heavy uh, feathers on the body and may not feel cool enough then the sweat glands sweat glands are also called as sudoriferous glands 
sudoriferous sudor means sweat because they produce sweat they are abundant on the skin of most of the mammals sweat glands are characteristic feature of the mammals the rest animals don't have the sweat glands they are slender and coiled tubes you can understand now what uh, the structure would be as i have already explained in previous slides so they are coiled tubes uh, embedded deep in the dermis so they are embedded in the dermis with their long ducts opening on the skin surface so sweat glands opens on the skin surface but they are embedded deep into the dermis layer of the skin so what they uh, secrete they secrete urea and salt dissolved in water thus getting the body rid of this uh, waste material eliminate the waste material in the form of little urea in the dissolved water aporation uh, in addition to it the swell, sweat gland also the uh, serve the purpose of the uh, cooling once the sweat is produced on your body in the very hot uh, season with the help of the air it is evaporated once it is evaporated you feel a cooling sensation so it is because of the sweat produced on your skin in addition to it you have the sebaceous gland sebaceous gland you can look at they are branched alveolar gland so you can imagine the structure i have already already explained they opens into the follicles of the hair so this is the hair then you can see this is the sebaceous gland it is opening into the follicle follicle means a space around the hair they may open directly onto the skin surface sometimes they also open directly onto the surface of the skin but normally they open into the follicle of the hair uh, they open directly onto the surface of skin where around the genital organs at the tip of the nose and at the edge of the lips so these are the organs where they pour directly open into the uh, direct their pores directly open onto the surface of the skin so what they do their oily secretion called sebum or grease keep the skin hair soft greasy waterproof and glistening so it is because of this reason the tip of the nose and the genital organs and the lips they are always they, they, they you may not uh, feel this structure dry they always have some oily secretion because here the glands are opening directly and once they are opening into the this hair follicle they are keeping the hair uh, glistening waterproof as well as greasy and the soft in addition to this the sebaceous gland the modified sebaceous gland are the serumous glands of the external ear canal and the meiobium gland of the eyelid the meiobium gland of the eyelid you can see over here they produce uh, the oily secretion uh, to uh, over the exposed surface of the eyeball thus this oily secretion keep the eye uh, moist so they are basically the modified sebaceous gland and uh, in a similar way in the external ear you may also have uh, observed that it is having a oily secretion against produced by the cerumen gland which is the modified sebaceous gland then you are having the scent gland uh, scent glands are modifications of either sebaceous or sudoriferous glands of the mammals so either the sebaceous gland which are called the which are uh, which i have discussed in this or you can see the sudoriferous that means sweat gland so either sweat gland or sebaceous gland they may modify and form a new type of gland called scent gland uh, they are uh, very much present in the mammals their their uh, smell or the odor which is uh, coming out from the from their secretion repel the foes that means they repel their predators they repel their uh, the species which they don't like and attract the member of the opposite sex so within a species they serve a purpose of attraction while within two species or more than two species they repel the opposite species so that the uh, there may not be there should not be a mating between the uh, individuals of opposite species male of one species and the female of other species so here they uh, serve the purpose of repelling but within the same species they attract one another 
So it is because of the scent gland that the scent is produced by the animals in the zoo. Once you go into the zoo, you may uh, feel some foul odor, foul smell. The foul smell is not the unhygienic condition. Basically, it is the scent produced by the, uh, the animals which you don't like because they, you are a different species and it is repelling you from coming close to, the, close to them. Then you have the memory glands. It is, you know, because the mammals, their characteristic feature, their characteristic feature is the presence of memory gland. So these are compound tubular glands. They produce milk during lactation when the mother feeds their baby. <coughs> Usually they occur in females, but also present on males in monotremes. Monotremes means the egg-laying mammals. You know these mammals are restricted to Australia and New Guinea presently. So these animals are called the monotremes. And they are also present in the male of the primates. So primates are those mammals which are having very high social nature. Like we, like you have the monkeys, like have the apes and the human beings. In monotremes, the memory gland lack nipples. But this is the difference between the memory gland of the monotreme and the primate that it is don't having the nipple in monotreme but having the nipple in the primates okay Men nipples are also called as teats so they resemble modified sweat glands so memory glands if you look close closely they are basically the modified sweat glands in other mammals they possess nipple and are modified sebaceous glands so somewhere they are modified sebaceous gland somewhere they are modified sweat glands. Thanks. This is all about the various types of the glands of the uh, 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 one of the derivative of the skin, the gland and the various types of glands, their function and the structure. Thanks. Have a nice day.